All right, guys. This is uh, Jacob from Wager Me This. We got Crabs Nation dice. I'm gonna play today. Uh, something uh, I want to talk about a little bit uh, is understanding how to correlate the things you should be betting on, the things you shouldn't be betting on. Uh, in playing from a read standpoint, playing from a frequency standpoint. Okay, so for example, simple frequency play this is the field. Very simple. All right, you see a five, six, seven, or eight. That's one more combination of field numbers in the positive. It's kind of like card counting. If anyone knows the plus minus version of card counting. All right, very similar to that. So the field, field fits that mold very well. So I'm going to take $500 and I'm only going to bet on the field here. All right, I'm just going to randomly roll. And I'm only going to bet on it when I see an ideal situation, in my opinion. All right, so it's a progression thing. Okay, so I roll a five, six, seven, or eight here. I'm going to put one unit on it. I miss. I'm going to put two units on it. I miss again. I'm going to put three units on it. I'm not doubling it. All right, but if I miss a fourth time, I'm going to go and put like, I don't know, six units on it. At that time, I'm going to attack more because your frequency gets better. And by frequency, I mean an adjusted probability, uh, basically saying that your average should, should match the out of 36 roll combinations, that little pyramid that you see people put up there, the different combinations, you know, there's four fives, five sixes, six eight, or five eights, and six sevens. You start taking those away, you're gonna have more chance to roll a field number. Uh, other people are going to say that every roll probability is the exact same. Uh, it's yes and no. There is a law of averages that applies in the game of craps. I've talked about it a lot. And that law of averages will work out to a frequency play, and you can use this to win. I'm going to show it here. So I'm only going to use the field, and I'm only going to use frequency on the field. And we have a heart six. Perfect. Now I'll mark the point, doesn't really matter because we're just going to bet the field. All right, so right now, the way we'd be looking at things, and now I reset it every time there's a field number rolled. I reset, all right? Is that going to be always true? No, it's still the same frequency, but I like to reset when a field rolls. Five, six, seven, eight. Uh, we got one of the sixes. So now we're just a little more likely to roll a field. And we got a seven. Okay, so that's two. I'm going to mark these. Let's mark them with white chips. All right, so it's two field, uh, non-field rolls. So it's a double our bet. And there's a double in the bubble. All right, so it went three rolls. And we got our money back. All right. Plus some, made some profit. Got, kind of got lucky with the, the double, sure. All right. Field number rolled, we're resetting. All right. You can do this. All right. There's a field number. All right. So this is kind of going the other way. Now you want to see maybe two non-field numbers before you jump back in there. All right. So now you've rolled two field numbers. You want to see a couple non-field numbers because this is working the opposite fashion. It's taking away from frequency. All right, there's one non-field number. All right, so this is working the opposite way now. We need to see at least two before we decide to get back in the field to do this correctly. Oh, nice jumped all off the table. And now are sometimes it's going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yes, it will, because this is nearly a coin flip bet. But you can win this way. You can win using this. All right, so there's two non-fields. There's a six, two, eight. All right, do you want to see one more? You might want to. But we did see two in a row, so we'll start with 25. And we got a three. All right. So, so far we haven't seen more than two in a row of either side. It's going to pay. Rack it up. 
All right, so now we're looking for uh, a non-field number row, then we'll jump in there, and there's an 11. Right, so that's two field numbers in a row. This is really sim simple to keep track of. You just keep track of what's going. You see, all right, there's a nine. This is three field numbers in a row. And you could use this the other way. You could be like, well, I need to be playing the five, six, and eight now. It makes a lot of sense. All right, we'll get into that in a minute. That'll be the second part of this. Three field numbers in a row, okay? Now, your frequency for your field is getting cut down really bad, Hey, right? You wouldn't want to jump on these other numbers. And there's the eight, okay? So that's a one non-field number. Remember, we got to get a couple because we saw a couple field numbers already play, so we're, we're not going to get stuck in this back and forth, back and forth. There's two eights in a row, okay? That was an eight. You might want to see one more. You did see three in a row, or that might be good enough for you. So we'll say it is good enough. We're going to jump in the field. Again, part of this is understanding that you may have to progress, and there's a double in the bubble. Ace is right there. Pay it. Okay, all we're using is frequency, all right? We saw two go the other way, two go this way, all right? So that's how the field would work. That's, how, that's a good example of what you do in the field. In fact, look, we're up 150 bucks. So now we're gonna do it the other way. When we start seeing a bunch of field numbers in a row, we're gonna play these other bets. All right, here we go. So we had one field number roll. We had a seven, okay. So that's one of each. Let's mark that. I'll mark the, the field numbers in red. And we're gonna use which one we think we should be using. All right. So now we'd swap that out. Now we're one field number. We, we want, I wanna see two in a row before I make a bet. All right, so this is jumping right back to the non-field. So this is the back and forth you don't want to get caught up in the frequency, all right? The reason being is because this could, this could really cause you problems. All right, there's a 10. This is going to be back on the field. All right, so if we see another field number in a row here, we're going to jump on that 5, 6, and 8. Because especially that's the way these dice are going. All right, that's two field numbers, all right? So now we're going to jump over here on this 5, 6, and 8. I'm going to play them like $24, guys. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the, the small change. And there's the 8 right there. And, and guys, literally, this is, the, this is this simple. All right, so let's say it paid, just pays 28 or whatever, but I'm just going to put a quarter there. All right, so now turn them off, pull them down, whatever you want to do. Yeah, you're going to wear dealers out playing this way, but you're trying to win. All right, so if we get another non-field here, uh, we're going to go on and, and there's a nine, jump right back to the field. So it's basically been going back and forth, and that's actually bad for the frequency play because if you're missing, it's just going to cost you money. But this is a very simple way to play craps, and it's very effective. All right, there's two field numbers in a row that tells us. Now you may want to play the seven as well. Maybe hop the sevens if you were worried about it. Uh, I wouldn't be all that worried. And there's a 10, so it's a third field number. The great part about this is you don't lose these like the field. So you can just leave them up there while this field run goes. Oh, another 10. It's four fields in a row, so it's it's probably prudent to double your bet up there. Because the odds of you getting this are getting better. And there's the five right there. 415, it's gonna be a non-field number. This is gonna win $70. Pull it all down. All right, so now we're looking for a couple uh, non-fields, so jump right back on the field. Yeah, 
And so it's very simple, guys. This is just playing frequency. It's playing a read. You're watching the table. What's actually happening? That's, that's the thing is, what is actually happening? This has been a really long roll, by the way, without a seven, all right? So if we see another non-field number, we're gonna jump in the field. And there's back-to-back -back sixes, okay. So now we're gonna get in the field for a quarter. And there's a seven, okay, so that's a third one. I'm going to go double that up. And there's the nine right there. So it went three rolls. And then jump back over to the field. You're going to get your money. All right, so now if we get a two field numbers in a row, we're going to jump on the five, six, and the eight. All right, so very simple way to play, guys. Very simple. And there's the six, so we jumped right back over in there. It's staying very true to how it should stay. Uh, right around 50%, so it's what it should do, so. All right, that's a field number. Are we gonna see two fields in a row and jump on that five, six, and eight? Again, it's very simple way to play, guys. Uh, all you're doing is watching what's happening and then making an attack from there. All right, there's two field numbers in a row. There's a double in the bubble again. We're gonna jump out here. I'll make these right this time. Here we go. And we've got a four, okay? So that's a third field number. If we get a fourth field number, we'll double them bets. Because your probability, your frequency chance goes up and up and up. Six, three, nine, and I'm just chunking these dice down the table, guys. There we go. And there's the five. All right, so it went four rolls without a box in our inside number, and then it hit. $70 winner again. Pull the money down. That was a five, not a seven. And back a seven. So that's two non fields in a row. We're going to jump in the field. Three non fields in a row. Double that bet. Four non fields in a row. Okay, perfect. So we just had four fields in a row, right? Earlier. So let's go to 125. And there's the 10. I mean, it, it, it's, it's so consistent. Now, don't get me wrong. There can be weird runs where you just go all the way out on the field. Sure. But it's just unlikely. All right. So we got, we're, if we get another field number, we'll jump on the box numbers. And again, we're just racking chips up. All right. Another field number. We're going to get on these box numbers. Just frequency play. You can do this with any plays. Some of them are just harder to manage. All right, there's an eight right away. Some of them are harder to manage. 35 on that eight. Rack it all up. The field's the easiest one. All right. Field's the by far the easiest. Field and box numbers. And there's a seven, so that's two in a row. So we're gonna jump on the field. We're gonna start with 50. All right, three in a row, perfect. We're gonna go to 100. And 
There's an eight, so that's four in a row. All right. We're going to go to 225. And there's a six. Uh-oh. 500 and whatever this is. And we're going to hit our frequency player right here. We haven't had one go this long yet. Oh, it jumped off the table. That was a good one. All right, try this again. And the nine. Again, frequency writes the probability. Hit on the field. Now, is that risky? Oh yeah, that was risky. We could have easily went the other way, right? Yeah, absolutely it could have. But it didn't. And that and that's the thing is if you're gonna try frequency craps, if you're gonna play reading and all that, you have to trust what you're doing. You can't just not trust it. Here we go. And there's a four, so that's two field numbers in a row. I'm gonna jump out here. I'm gonna play it doubled up. Start. Why not? Right? We're winning. There's an eight right away. So again, I, I don't think I gotta show this anymore. We've seen way more than enough of this work. Uh, can it lose? Sure. If we would have rolled a bad roll on that one roll, we would have lost. But we didn't. And that that's the big thing. Is every strategy can fail. Every, every idea in craps in gambling can fail. The truth is, is that this one doesn't fail very often. This is actually a very good play. This does not fail that often. If you'll do it correctly, if you won't get uh, scared of the play if you won't do that if you'll actually play it out I'm not saying you'll never have a day where you lose you will have days that that other that next number comes and it's it beats you but most of the time the huge majority of the time this will work and this is a very simple play it's a very it's a very good beginner play a guy that has a hundred bucks he, he can if it's a five dollar table he can throw that money in the field you know even if it's a $15 table, it still gives you a couple chances at it. Uh, it's a very frequency playing in craps. It's a very, very underutilized way to play. And you can do it basically any way you want, any direction you want. So, like, let's say you saw three fives in a row. It's probably a good idea to lay that five. Even if it gets hit on a fourth one, make that lay bigger the next time. It's just not going to keep rolling fives. That's just, it's just not the way probability works. And it's not the way averages work. Uh, you might have weird spikes here and there, but usually they level out and they get to the natural probability. So obviously we start with 500. So we're up 600 in $70. We're up 670, right? That quick, just in no time. All right, so let's start back up with this. Let's go... $600 this time. And this time I'm going to use frequency plays uh, to the lay. So if we see a couple uh, repeater type numbers, I've actually made video on this repeater, uh, we're, we're going to lay that number. And, and this works, guys. This, is, this absolutely works. All right, so let's see what's going on. We get a repeater. We're going to lay it. Okay, we got a 10. We can mark that point. Yeah, and what I mean by repeater is a back-to-back -back repeater. And there's a nine, okay. Do you get a back-to-back -back play? A seven, okay. Now you're just watching this. You, you could be playing other stuff, but you're waiting for this play. Waiting for this play to happen. There's an eight. And you can judge it a few ways. You can judge it per shooter. You can judge it just as the table as a whole. Uh, you can judge it overall rolls. 
There's a seven. Okay. And you can repeat against the seven, and I'll show that. I've had a video on this. There's a 12. So you can't really repeat against the horn numbers because uh, you can't play them. So that, that's the only thing that's not, you can't do. There's a five. Okay. Oh, back to back fives. We've got our first full on repeat. That's my dog. Okay, it's $75 on the lay five. Okay. We're looking for a set. And there's the seven right away. Uh, is that going to happen? Nah, you're not always going to have the seven right away. But a good chance you're not going to roll a five. $50. I'm not going to worry about the big guys. All right, here we go. And there's a four. And you can play this as big as you feel comfortable with. All you're doing is playing frequency. There's most likely numbers aren't rolling three times in a row. It just doesn't happen that often, guys. I know people, they remember it when it does happen, so it seems like it happens often. But it actually doesn't happen that often. And there's a three. And the reason being is because probability is against it. Probability dictates that you shouldn't see a lot of repeating numbers. All right, there's a 10. Oh, I thought we were gonna get back to back 10s, but we didn't, there's a nine. And you can do this spread out. You can be like, okay, in five rolls, did I get two of the same number? So that's a little more, uh, how would you say it, risky? Or like right here, we've had these all these sixes popping up, right? All these sixes. So that probably means that six and under, you're going to start having some some numbers that fall six and under that don't have sixes on them. You've had a ton of sixes coming up. There's a nine. Okay. So if you did bet the four or five on the six, well, there's a good chance you're going to hit one of those. All right. There's another six on a dice. So you can use, you can break this, this frequency down even further to just what one dice is doing. And there's a nine. Okay. So we're way up high. All our numbers are coming up here. All right. So you could be piling money up down here because those got to come guys. The, 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 the reality of it is, is those numbers have to come for probability to stay true. If those numbers don't ever show up, one of two things are happening. That dice won't fit. One of two things are happening. Either the dice are messed up and somebody's cheating or something, or someone is really good at controlling the dice. And there's a six right there. So boom, you would have got that one. So that it, there is possibilities for numbers to just stay one way, but it has to be a manipulation. So either someone has put some rigged dice out there or, uh, the dice are too beat up to have a really random roll, and that does happen sometimes. Uh, or someone is just really good at controlling them. And all those things can happen. But So th this is just something I want to talk about is frequency play. And, and another thing, guys, is when you get those feelings and you're like, man, there's been a lot of sixes on these dice, play the other numbers. Those feelings are real. Those things are good observations. Those are reads. Play those reads, guys. Don't get scared of those reads. Why, why are you getting scared of the reads? I saw it again the other day. Uh, there was like nine field numbers in a row. I, it was a ridiculous amount of field numbers in a row. Now, and maybe not nine. Nine might be too many. It might be six. And uh, everyone got off the table. All you had to do was play the five, six, and the eight, and uh, and the seven, which is exactly what I did. And the next three rolls were five, six, five, just like that, five, six, five. And it was all frequency. I didn't have any idea about the guy rolling the dice. He was in the back hook back there, just chunking them down the table. But probability told me, frequency told me, 
the law of averages told me that I wasn't going to keep getting field numbers, that I needed to get on this table because we were going to see some of these, some of these five, six, sevens, and eights. And sure enough, it obviously happened. So uh, same thing works the other way. You see six, eight, six, eight, six, eight. It's time to get off that and, and start playing something else. Now, the one caveat is that if there is someone that is really good at controlling the dice, so there is some of knowing who you're playing with. And obviously sometimes you won't know because you won't know the people. But if you see someone setting the 3V and you watch them throw and they go six, eight, six, eight, six, you probably should play the six and eight. But if you see someone setting the 3V and they start rolling three ones, how did they get that? That means one moved over, guys. That means that you had this number happening. You know, you had something weird happening. You know, so it's probably more of a random roll than a controlled roll. Anyways, guys, this, this is just kind of a, a talk on frequency play and, and how to use the field in frequency play. It's, it's, it's kind of a theoretical craps, I guess. Uh, but guys, theoretical craps pays very well. Very well. Because you're using the math of the game as opposed to uh, using the casino's style of math. As a, by using House Edge or something like that, but using the casino's math. Use your own math. Use your own plays. Use your own thoughts on the game. Use probability advantage. Don't use House Edge. House Edge will fail you. House Edge is literally tells you in, in the definition that you're going to lose this much. If, if you think that that's a good idea, then why would you bet if you know that the absolute outcome is a loss? This doesn't make sense. So that, that, that house edge is very flawed. So please uh, look into some other ways to play and you'll see that the game of craps is manipulatable. It's uh, more frequency based and more based on runs of dice as opposed to a pure direct correlation between the odds and the probability which is what equals house edge and basically what it boils down to guys is house edge is the casino's way of saying this game will make us this much money it has nothing to do with the individual player but individual players can't seem to get away from that because it's a very old thing it's a very traditional way to play but so anyway you guys have a great day this is jacob from wager me this and i hope you like the video